Hey YouTube, what's up? This is the Reluctant Navi back again. And um this video hope um this is designed to help good sisters so that they can understand what we recognize. All right. But basically the main purpose of this video is so that the decent black men can see the biggest lies women tell and that we should leave these kind of women alone in other words we need to start separating the wheat from the tear all right and you can't do that until both the wheat and tear grow up together uh my man baptized a scribe has it did a video on wheats and tares and he has a couple of them uh, y'all go check that out um that's b-a-p-t-i-z-e uh scribe um check out um uh judah or a dude by judah or jacob um uh, also they have some they putting out some good stuff too um as a matter of fact i put both of them in one of my links or in one of my videos all right but check the if i put somebody in my video that they t you know they have they're saying something to think about and even with me i don't expect all of y'all to agree with everything i say um th this is just dialogue it isn't like i know everything because i'm not the almighty so i can't know everything but i figured that if i put out what i see as the truth and everybody put out honestly what they see as the truth especially with a scripture believing brothers um we can get closer to the real truth by um taking in um some of the thoughts of a lot of other brothers uh, you know and so i hope y'all understand this now the reason why i deal with um black women a lot is that they are the ones that easily deceive themselves and others and that's what make a bad black woman so dangerous to good black men all right there it is right there that's the thing that makes a bad black woman good i mean the bad black woman very dangerous to good black men so this is 10 of the biggest lies black women tell either directly or indirectly to others and themselves all right some of this is funny but it's true this is my real hair all right we all know these black women that walk out the house with all this weave on and stuff like that and all right so the first one um is they're they're like this is my real hair this is my real hair this ain't read this is my real hair all right and um basically they kind of brainwashed themselves into thinking that after um a comedian said i paid for it i got a receipt so it's mine right no it's somebody else's dna on top of your head which then ruins your hair um everybody love um what's her name that plays olivia polk dang i can't remember her name right now this is her with the glasses on and her her hairline is receding from all of those weaves all right um i'm gonna have to go back and put her name up in there because i sure forgot it carrie washington carrie washington so that's carrie washington in the middle so she's going to be coming up here uh a li uh some more right lie number nine strong independent black woman women right no they're not most of these women with most of these children as a matter of fact most black women with children are not independent at all they're getting their resources from the man they screwed and then kicked to the curb or he was no good anyway so they're getting his child support as a result of them having the children they get uh, money back on tax season they get money back um, to go to college um they get all kind of government benefits as a result of those children right now 
it gets to the point where they keep having children so much and when men leave them to the curb they go on youtube like the woman um to the bottom right make a scene and her video is um was all over youtube about somebody need to take care of her 15 children somebody the government somebody need to so that's the strong independent black woman for you all right um they're independent in name only and the only people that think they're independent is them all right so let's continue i wear weed because it helped my hair grow into the weed but not on my head all right now um y'all remember countess vaughn look her up and she had a scathing report on people that wear a lot of these weaves um i have uh african friends um one one lady she does hair and you know with the girls i'm raising when i need when i go in i ask her for a favor i help her and her husband out you know because they come over here they speak french right but they came over here and I was helping her out. Um, a Another one, she left where I stay, um, the town that I stay in. Um, but um, she had another friend that we liked each other, but the language barrier was too much. Um, and that I speak French a little bit, but I speak kind of like proper French. So it, speaking with her is like if an English person would come over here and talk to somebody in the hood right um they're going to have a hard time understanding the hood english right and so the french she was talking was not the france french um it was really broken french as like we would say broken english so you know she's um but she's probably wrestling with like four other languages you know these sisters from um the continent of africa all right so anyway so i watched them when they when the women come in get their hair braided and they really have no hair in front and what these women do is braid their hair in such a way where it looks like they have hair but as they're starting that they have no hair in front from all the weave that has been braided in right if you braid your natural hair it's his natural weight but this is all the weave that was braided in but they will lie to themselves and say we've helped my i wear weave because it helped my hair grow now i put this up here because i hear it all the time um so um this woman was a world-renowned model the one in the bathing suit and that's what's happened to her hair she's the one that used to beat up people with phones and everything dang see i know i should have put the names under here now that i'm doing this video i'm forgetting everybody's name but it might come back to me but you guys know um the one that beat people up with phones all right so you guys y'all in the comment se section y'all tell people who that is you know used to throw phone shoes and everything at her help all right so that is Number eight. Number seven. I'm a thousand percent sure he's my baby daddy. She liked to creep around. She's saying you're the father. True story. I'm 100 percent sure he's her biological father. You did have sex with her, right? We did have sex. You understand that's how babies are made. If she mine, I would get down on my knees and cry. Miss Diaz, is there something else? <laughs> You may be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is a case of Flowers versus Diaz. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Yeah. Mr. Flowers, you have brought your ex-girlfriend to court today to prove that you are not the biological father of her two-month-old daughter, Callie. 
Yes, Sean. You claim you were duped into naming the baby and signing her birth certificate, and now the DNA test will prove your case. Yes, Sean. Ms. Diaz, you claim that it was Mr. Flowers' jealousy and insecurity that drove you to have sex with another man, but you are confident that Mr. Flowers is your daughter's biological father. Yes, Your Honor. Now, waiting in the hallway is Mr. Bowman, the man you cheated with, who Mr. Flowers believes is Callie's dad. Mr. Flowers, please tell the court why you've claimed a baby for two months who you don't believe is really yours. I gave her my name, you know, to like Callie, then my last name, Flowers. You've actually bonded with Callie. You oh. named her? Man, yes. I, every time I walk in the room, she smiles. Like, daddy is here. Like, oh, my daddy is here, you know? She smile, like, big smile. You know, she she loved me. She, she really loved me. So it's like, I can't imagine Kelly not being mine. But you have doubt. Yeah, I have doubt. Everybody's gonna have doubt if you're sleeping around. And now, you believe Mr. Bowman is Kelly's biological father? I believe it. But it's more to the story she actually talking about. She liked to creep around. When I get her mad, she liked to sliver away. She give me this some type of attitude like, oh, I don't, I don't want to be with you. We never going to work, you know, except for standing still and saying, hey, let's try to make this work. Stop trying to go to the next man and find love because your love is right here. So as you stand here today, do you still love Ms. Diaz? Yes, well, in my heart. So, Ms. Diaz, you say you have no doubt. No, Your Honor. Why is that? Explain. Uh, the doctor confirmed the time of conception was around the time that I had sex with uh, Mr. Flowers. We were the only two people together at that time, uh, which was the uh, first week of August. And there could not be no other possibility but Mr. Flowers. So tell me about the nature of this relationship. Me and Mr. Flowers have an off and on relationship, a very rocky relationship. Met up again after high school about three years ago. Although we love each other, we don't get along. We're like oil and water. Uh, we fight bigger all the time, and we're better off just as friends. And so, is this true, Mr. Flowers? Yes. On and off? Yes. Oil and water? Yes. Yes, Your So how do you see the relationship? Were you committed? I try my best. You know, I feel like if somebody lied to me the first time, you lost my trust. Straight up. And I'm just being honest. I try to give her a chance after chance after chance. But I feel like I was working too hard. All right. He was working too hard, right? She is, you know, she did all of that, right? So let's see the results. And I'm going to tell you a little more about what happened to him. All right. Mr. Flowers, you... are not the father. Mr. Bowman, you are not the father. Ms. Diaz, is there something else? Missing from the calendar. Um, the week after I was uh, intimate with another guy, um, in July, I was uh, living with another guy. Ms. Diaz? That would make four different men you slept with within a span of a possible conception period? Yes, Your Honor. It's hard for me to stand over here and look at a beautiful young girl like you. You just giving yourself away for free. I don't know what you out there looking for, but it's not this. Do you know where these other two men are? No, Your Honor. Your Honor, that's still my daughter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? It hurts, but in my heart, that is my daughter. In your heart and in the eyes of the law. Yes. Because you signed that birth certificate. Oh, and I'm, I'm glad I did it. Because I don't want her to grow up without a father like I did. For someone you can't get along with. At the end of the day, you're blessed to have him. Did you understand that, people? This is how these black women lie. She sat up there lying. She should be put in jail for perjury. Anybody that goes to child support court and a woman lie like that, that woman should be in, put in jail for perjury. All right? But they lie, and black women have gotten so accustomed to lying that it is hard for them to know the truth, even when we're putting it in their face like this. Because the, nobody puts them in jail for perjury. They seem to pay no price for lying, so they keep the lies in their head, and they lie consistently. A man lies, he goes to jail. There are consequences when men lie, but not when women lie. So that's why they keep doing it. So number six, we'll deal with the next lie. I'm a woman of God. I said God, but I forgot that these church black women put a T at the end, end of, at the end of it. So is I'm a woman of God, you know. And I want so that's number five that they're a woman in God because when you ask them anything about um, the scriptures, they don't know anything about that. They know only was in the New Testament, which is not scripture. All right, scriptures are anything the prophets said and the commandments. The New Testament is not scripture. They were um, invented by the Romans to keep people from reading the scriptures, thereby giving them power. Now, with all the black men that that we argue and have great knowledge and stuff like that, y'all would have to admit that whether um, y'all believe in the New Testament or New Testament or not. That your foundation, especially if you're a Hebrew Israelite, your foundation is the commandments, which are in the scripture, the Old Testament. That's your foundation. That's the foundation upon what everything else you learn about and read about is based. Right? That is not these black women foundation. That's women of God. Their foundation is who the black man is that's over them. All right. Number five. I want a man of God, right? So what usually happens to real men of God, real men that's trying to search and be what um, God has called them to, to be, they usually end up dead, as in the bottom picture, at the hands of the black woman. So the bottom picture, you got the black preacher, the, who the black women up at the top considers the man of God, who was having an affair with the woman in the middle in this picture, who was married to the football player, right? The football player, I put his video on him trying to convince um, the people in the gangs to get out of the gangs to turn their lives over and lead a more spiritual life. I put a video in his own words. So he was truly seeking to do right and be a holy and spiritual man. Yes, the pastor over here, the man of God that these black women up at the top considers the man of God. Yeah, he killed that dude. Murdered him, shot him five times in the church. What did the people do? Well, the people of God pray for the pastor, not for the man who they know that the pastor was having an affair with his wife. Not that um, for the murdered man who deserved justice, but they were praying for the pastor. Because after all, he's the man of God. The guy that committed adultery and murder is the man of God. While the guy was trying to reach the gang members and stuff and tell them that there's a better life, there's a more spiritual life. Oh, that guy, he gets to die. But this is what you get from the women of God. I'm looking for a good man. All right. And so the top is how black women define good men. You know, the the preachers that um, 
that commit adultery by sleeping with all the um, husbands, I mean, wives that go to his church. Or in this case, to the um, left at the top, um, preachers who sleep, sleep with the, um, the women's sons as their boys and keep raping them um, from boys into manhood. All right, just destroyed them. And he still has a church full of women. Or these guys, right? And pay attention to the picture in the middle. Yes, that is a girl, right? Well, that's how a lot of black women are defining good men as dyke women. But then they want to get mad when the dyke women can't physically protect them. You know? So this is it. This is their idea of a good man. You're either a dyke woman or some thugs. You know, a lady was mad that her daughter with the guy in the blue went to live with him and sell drugs with him. But he beat the crap out of her for some reason. But did her daughter get the blame for making a bad choice and choosing a thug who usually breaks the crap out of people? No. She lied to herself and said it's all his fault. All right, but down at the bottom, the football player, yes, he had a woman, but she slept with the pastor. All right, so that's his woman who slept with the pastor, and that woman got him killed. Oh, and furthermore, just in case y'all didn't follow the story, the problem that he had with the pastor is the pastor got this one, got her pregnant, right, and paid for her to have an abortion and that's how she found out she was pregnant with the past pastor's child and not his which then caused him to go down to the church and confront the pastor and the pastor knowing that it was coming um had a gun he thought he was going to come to work but he had a gun i put the whole story up um so look for a picture of a pink church in the thing and you could um you can look at the story or just write in a comment section and I'll send you the link. I'll, I'll put the whole story up. That is really sad. So the dude that believes in something and goes on a hunger strike for it. Nope, not a good man. The hardworking man. Nope, not a good man. The man that has, um, that can take care of his finances. Nope, not a good man. But the dudes with the underwear showing up in a uh, picture with his draw showing the blue yeah, those are what black women are defining as good men. How do we know? That's who pro that is who pro are producing 65 to 70 percent of all the children in this day and age right now. This don't make no sense. I am so tired of y'all social media and y'all Facebook people bashing me. Y'all don't even know me. I was the best mother I was to my son. So somebody leak a video of me banning a car. You why? If a motherfucker telling you they gonna try to take your life too because whatever the fuck was going on, they already took my son. I walk to work. I get on the bus. I'm not trying to be a target for nobody. What you mean? I'm, a, I'm just gonna be like, okay, I know, okay, I know I'm in a pool of trouble, but yet I'm gonna keep walking myself to work or keep getting on the bus. How y'all sound? I got this shit for my protection, and y'all bashing me for getting a cop for my protection? I'm pretty sure that's something my son would have wanted me to do. Y'all people is crazy. Please just leave me alone. If y'all not gonna support me, leave me alone. I still have to live my life. Yes, my son go. He's in a better place. Watch y'all just leave me alone. You're not going to support. Leave me alone. Oh, so number three. I'm the best mother I can be so long as I'm getting money and support from everybody else. I'm going to use it on myself. I'm going to use it. Oh, yeah, this woman went to Vegas to gamble with that money. She bought herself a car with that money. She did everything but what she was supposed to do with that money. Oh, and this is from GoFundMe, right? So, yeah, this is three reason um, lie number two. They walk. They simply walk out the door. Most black women lie when they walk out the door. All right. 
over in this picture right here, um, over in the pictures to the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, the eight pictures that's clustered together, you got a few women and a few trannies. Can you tell the difference between the women and the trannies? I mean, really? And it's sad, but more, more of our women don't look like the women to the right. All right. So basically, they lie when they walk out the door. They lie about what they really look like, their true appearance, how long their hair really is. You see what I'm saying? So they lie about their appearance. They lie about their height because most of them will wear heels. They'll be five two, but then they say they, that they won't talk to a man unless he's six feet. They be five three, five five. Oh, he got to be six feet. See? And so I might want to retract some of the things um, because, all right, black women, I've been saying that the black women have been lying about all the good black men are in jail. And then I had to really think about it and think about what they consider good black men. So if you look at what black women actually consider good black men, which are thugs, drug dealers, um, people that kill, murder, and beat them up, um, people that rob, steal, um, people that do not work but live off of them. Okay, that's what they consider the good black men. And yes, they're right. All of those guys are in jail. But not these guys that at the bottom, the working men. And these working men can um, constitute the majority of the black male population. As a matter of fact, I put up the statistics before. There are over a million more men in college than there are in jail. There's 800,000 in jail. There are 1,900,000 and something odd thousand black men, not in college, but have graduated college with a bachelor's degree or higher. So then that means there are more black men in college than that. Y'all understand? So I put up the statistics that of black men that actually back graduated with a bachelor degree or higher that did not count associate's degree or mechanics degree or any kind of trade um, trade cert certification. All right. And it was one million nine hundred and something odd thousand. Right. There's 800,000 black men in prison, right? So the only good men to black women are the 800,000 black men in prison. The 1,900,000 and some odd thousand, those aren't good enough men to be screwing. Um, not until they get worn out and have a bunch of children and, and then they want them guys. All right. And so that was going to be my number one. But considering that uh, my the, the point I just made for this, all right, then I'm going to just make that my 1A because black women's view of what a good black man is, is so disturbed and effed up and jacked up that um, it's, it's a wonder that they make any good choices at all. Number 10, or number one, I'm a good woman. I'm a strong, independent, educated black woman. And my bad choices are the black man's fault. Has to be the biggest lie that black women tell themselves. Kerry Washington in the glasses, she's losing her hair. But black women idolize her because she play a scandalous hoe that destroys the ma marriage of a president. Remember, these are the same godly women, right? Even to the point where one put uh, in a Facebook note that F all black men, she rather be, she would rather be a, the, a bed wench whore for the white man than a piece of gum on the bottom of a black man's shoe. That's how sick these black women are. 
what black men really want is a relationship with good um, black women that are easy to live with. And we want them to look like the picture on the far right. Natural. But that ain't what we're going to get. All right. Now. I will I, I will close it out with this. If you are if you consider yourself a good black woman and you want to be good for a good black man, then you need to get with the program. And stop lying to yourself and change. Black men. What I am. The purpose of my videos is this. I am saying simply this. That when it comes to black women. We have to understand the fake really really well. So that we can know the real when it comes. All right. This is destruction. A real black woman will not come to destroy. And a real black woman, when she comes to us, will want to follow our lead. That's a real black woman. These women of God, none of these black women, um, none of these things that I presented in, in here are indicative of a good black woman at all. As a matter of fact, this reaps disaster and evil all over the place. With that said, I'm out.